Hello everyone, this is Trenna from John's Furniture Repair and I'm in here today with a couple of built-in cabinets that are no longer built in and we're going to be making them into freestanding uh, beautiful solid oak cabinets. Uh, they were taken out of a home, probably 20s, 30s ish home and I'll show you a couple details what we have to do to make them freestanding bookcases. So right off the bat you can see where they were built in from the top. They were built around a couple of um, columns that went up to the ceiling and this whole side was around that column so that needs to be filled in with wood and uh, a few different things before that need to happen. If you look at the cabinet the one side is much larger than the other obviously so we're going to actually be cutting that down. Same thing on this one we do have the piece that's missing on the base. We'll be using a couple of boards from the home that the customer thankfully dropped off some really nice thick old oak and we'll actually be splicing in a piece instead of replacing the entire top and just making that look as good as possible. We're gonna do a complete cleanup. We're not refinishing, we're just gonna make them look as best they can. The finish is actually in really good condition, so uh, we don't have to worry about that too much. Just give it a nice oil or wax with the beeswax polish. So let's get to work. After growing up in my dad's restoration shop and learning everything he knows, I'm continuing on with the business in my own shop and after 25 years, I can truly say I love this job and I just have to share it with you. Whether it's a priceless 300 year old hand carved piece of history or just an ordinary table or dresser, I pour my heart into each and every piece a customer brings me. I'm Trenna and this is John's Furniture Repair. Okay, so starting on number one, basically we're just gonna do everything twice. Um, and I'm gonna get the top off because we are going to be sawing this down here to the same uh, width as the other side here. So we need to take this off and that entails trim first. And I'm gonna try to center this top as best I can without having too much of, um, you know, I'm thinking maybe I should do like an edge band around the whole thing and just have the center. And that way I can really disguise that. I, mean, I haven't really 100% decided how I'm gonna take care of that. Cause we don't have, another thing is we don't have 100% of this trim. So I'm thinking of using a smaller trim so I can have less of a, an overhang. Cause it is quite large right now. It's over an inch and seven eighths, I would say this overhang here so we can really bring that over and see how much we have left or do an edge band around the whole thing with some miters at the corner so you don't see like a, a butt joint of a piece here so I'm not 100% on that yet a lot of these things I kind of figure out what I'm going to do I let the piece kind of dictate where I'm going to go with it the other thing is I do have extra trim on the backs of these, but originally these are supposed to be, you know, freestanding in the middle of a room. You've got it built into your side here and there's a big pillar that goes up here. So there's a mounting plate here too. So we are making this to go up against a wall. So I could use this extra trim, but again, I'm thinking of going with a smaller trim so I can get the most out of this top. So we've got all the pieces taken off and it'll be glued. And there are a couple of slotted screws in there. So if we reposition this top, we'll just have to redo all of that. And then on the inside here, this is one it looks like. And then along the back a couple and along the front there's a couple. Did you hear any of that? Alrighty, so I've got those taken out. Now hopefully the top just comes right off. There we go. Just double checking. Looks like a bit of a nail. Oh, 
it's got a, that's nice. It's got a mortise and tenon. This actually, or sorry, a dado fits into a groove. Ow! Into that slot there. So it needs to be popped out. That makes, I mean, that's cool, but it really makes it difficult to reposition this top. Because that's going to be tough. See what I mean? Gotta let the piece talk to you. Okay. I now need to remove the baseboard on the back because we're actually not putting the baseboard on the back, back on because he wants to put it up against a wall so he wouldn't want a 7 8 inch piece of baseboard plus your baseboard in your house because that would really push it off the wall very far. So it looks like most of it's already coming off so hopefully it's pretty easy to come off. just be okay to be like that I'll ask the customer so that can go back up against the baseboard and stay there and then the side baseboards are just going to get cut flush with the back panel so it can just pop up against that I'm really out of breath today okay so I've got it all measured out uh, to be the same width as the other side triple checked and now we're just gonna cut it with the circular saw Okay, so I've got both sides cut now. We've got even uh, widths on both sides for the rails or the frame. So now I gotta think about putting a panel here. And with the wood that the customer supplied me, I can laminate these together and um, get two sides. These ones are shorter, so they'll only come to about this point down here, leaving about six inches at the bottom, but the baseboard is over 10 inches. So that's fine if there's a little bit of a gap, it'll be kind of like it was on the bottom and the back here. So the other ones go right to the base, doesn't matter either way. So right in between these guys, I'm gonna have to pop these corner blocks and I'm not worried about the structure here um, because I am gonna have a panel glued in here. It'll kind of act like these corner blocks are. So it's gonna go back in here and I could put smaller corner blocks in or do pocket screws or something, but I really don't think it's necessary at this point. This piece is also held in um, by a joint coming from here to here as well. So we're gonna leave that alone and you know, rely on our, our glue joint, our lamination in here. So I've got, excuse me. Okay, I've got um, nine and seven eighths up top, goes all the way down to 10 down there, but there are some gaps down there. So I'm gonna um, squish it back together to get the nine and seven eighths to work. And so the wood that I've got here is nice old oak. So that'll work great. And it came from the same house. So I'm gonna try to save the finish. Not sure if I'm gonna get that, but I'm gonna uh, throw one edge through, or both edges actually, through the jointer. And we should end up with uh, just a, well, just over one foot, which is plenty to, to fit in there. So let's take these over to the jointer. I've checked them for nails, but I don't wanna deal with that and get these edges nice and ready for surface plane or jointing. Oh, 
Okay, so we've got everything jointed and I've jointed all sides so that we can glue it into, well, I'll have to do it again when I cut it, but should be a good joint to, to um, put into the cabinet itself. So we're just going to do the lamination here, which means glue things together. And I'm just using tight bond for this because this is the best type of glue to use for laminating two flat pieces of wood together. Just make sure it is everywhere. Pop these two together. Throw a couple clamps on. This is where we'll find out if we need to refinish or not. If I can get the joint flush. Because this one's a little bit wonky on the back. So I just gotta work really hard at getting that glue up nice and flush. This one's good. And then it shifted. I'll put a couple cowls on it. Anyways, we'll get that all put together and then the other one and get to working in, into the cabinet. Alrighty, so I've got the top here and I've just been doing some figuring. So it looks like I'll need to make this top about 30 and three quarters of an inch to get about a quarter of an inch overhang on each side. Now, because this top used to overhang both sides, I do have to remove this whole piece here and this would be flush with the back panel. So removing this gives me about an inch and a quarter material or an inch and an eighth material. And I need to add onto the end of this about seven eighths, I think. Yeah, onto the end of this. So what I'm gonna do is rip this off. And then up here, I'm gonna cut the length of 30 and three quarters for my whole length. And then I'm gonna miter this one side. Attached to that miter will be a piece of this that I've cut off and we're going to have that miter run, running down along the side to make up the width. So I will need to widen these dados to get my piece to fit as well as over here. My dado needs to come uh, pretty much into this minus a quarter of an inch here. So that I can do with a router. Rip it on the table saw and then cut to length, miter, and then miter some of this, and probably cut this edge off nice and laminate that on to the side. And then we should have um, a well-fitting top if everything goes well. So let's give it a whirl. Okay, so you can see everything is sitting in the new groove. The old one is right there at the end where it was. So that's all back. It's all sitting in there nicely now. So what I'll do next is cut off this overhang on the back. So it'll just be flush there and uh, cut this to length and then the miter and all that kind of stuff. So it is the next day and I was fitting these tops and I just was not happy with um, how little of a reveal that I had left. You can see down here, I had only like an eighth of an inch, maybe three eighths or not three eighths, three sixteenths of an inch. And so I've decided to go ahead and add a whole length onto the other side as well. And then what I'm gonna do, because I've got 
butt ends here is do, I'm gonna cut this front down because it does overhang a lot. And I'm going to be putting um, a piece along the front for an edge band as well. Okay, so I've got this cut down, sanded, and dry fit. It's a pretty tight fit, but I really want it to be. So I gotta kinda hammer it in place. I'm probably gonna end up doing some work with that stain, but the other side's worse. So I'm just gonna get some glue in here and clamp it up. All right, so I've been working on the tops and I thought I would get back to the base from here. So I've got a couple pieces cut and I'm just going to use high glue to put them back on because this stuff here is high glue and the new high glue will activate the old high glue, but I also sprayed that with some water so that we can reactivate this old high glue. But the nice warm new glue will uh, activate it even further. Alright, so I've got both of these tops on, trim on, touched up, puttied, stained, and ready for a finish. And the sides here as well, all stained up with Gaudi's Golden Oak, looking really good with the original color. A little bit more red, but we can tint that in. So, um, my edges here are uneven, but that's okay. We've got a wide piece on one side and a very thin piece on one side. This one's a little bit different. We've got a half inch-ish piece here and more like a 5 eighths piece on this side. So that is just how it turned out, unfortunately. It's not that big of a deal um, because I have the same amount of overhang on both, but because these were built in the house when the house was built, they are different cabinets. They're not exactly the same. So it looks good and we'll tint it in. And uh, same with the trim, everything was a little bit uneven, so recutting miters and stuff was a little bit difficult to get them to fit around a not square cabinet, because it was built to the house. But I think we've got it looking pretty good. I did some touch-ups everywhere with some stain. And the backs, we cleaned up the glue off the back that had the old piece of trim there, 
and stained it as well. And because we're not putting that trim molding back on uh, the piece, I just had to stain in, you can kind of see a little different line right there. So I'll tint that a little bit in as well because we're just gonna leave it plain like that without that oak trim. So I'm gonna let these dry overnight and we'll get a couple coats of lacquer on tomorrow. All right, so I've got um, one coat on everything, two coats on the tops, and we need a little bit of tint, which I knew we would around this area where we took the trim off of. You can see it's a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna be using um, Brown Cherry by Mohawk, and what I'm gonna be doing that's different than I usually do is actually taping this line off because it's such a hard line here. So we just need to get the color right there none of it here because so I don't want to alter that and I'll probably hit this edge a little bit as well as any other place that looks a little bit light just to bring it in we're not going to do anything with the interior of the cabinets they're perfectly fine just a good clean and as well here um, had a couple of issues right here so tinting that in so it goes away probably have to do a tape line there as well so I'm just going to give these a good sand with 320 and do those touch-ups, and then we can do the final coat of lacquer. Okay, there they are, all finished up. Three coats of lacquer on everything and looking really good. So most of our work um, is on the side. Here's how the tops turn out with the edging. It's a nice color on this wood. And here are the sides where we laminated the wood together to make a solid side. And we cut down this trim to fit around the new size so that both of the face frames are the same size on the cabinet, so that looks good. And here's the other top. Looking really great. So thanks for joining me on this one, guys. A little transformation on these built-in cabinets. And I hope you enjoyed uh, the process with me. And thank you so much for um, joining me through the process, really appreciate it. And if you wanna support this channel and you enjoyed these videos and they help you with your own projects, you can buy me a coffee. The link is in the description below. And I hope to see you on another video. Thanks and have a great day. Cheers.